Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Disney Duo. I'm Jimmy, and this is my sister, Katie. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is the fourth installment of this lovely show. We've been going through all of the parks at Walt Disney World down in Florida, talking about our favorite rides. We did our top five over at Magic Kingdom, top three at both Epcot and MGM Hollywood Studios, respectively. But now we're talking about Animal Kingdom. But before we get into that, lovely person wrote into us a beautiful picture of beautiful drawing by Stephen Purifoy of Kevin from Up Magical. You've probably seen it on the screen right now. He it's is wonderful. It's magical. It's super good. Thank you, Stephen, so much for doing that. Stephen is actually going to Disney uh, in the future here at some point. I can't say when, but it's very exciting and I'm very envious. So Have fun, on. Stephen. Thank you for doing that. Think of us. Think of me. Okay, it's a fan of the opera. It's a different thing. <laughs> everything <laughs> okay. uh, anyway so let's let's jump right into it we're talking about animal kingdom mm -hmm. 1998 i think it was and actually was katie right. and i were there like right around the opening we were yeah. there like preview party type of thing like we were there yeah. early like we got there right and that was a perfect time because we were eight years old so it's like yeah that's perfect really good seven time. or eight um uh, yeah so it's a, it's an interesting park but it hasn't developed as much as the other parks there's not as many attractions there but we're going to talk about our talk three today can't even say it talk about our top three it's gonna be great all right so katie you go first my third is expedition everest Ooh, expedition everest really yes you Why? know he just said that there weren't many rides and i had to pick something even though it makes me violently ill ah yes mm -hmm. i think i picked it because there's just so much stuff to look at when you're in the queue line and then even when you go on the ride just the you know the story behind it yeah and then I mean, I call him the Yeti. Uh, we got to see him in action before they stopped him from moving. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I was also there when I saw him in action. Because I feel like I, I did see him when he was in A did mode. Okay. But now he's in what they call B mode, uh, yeah. which means that he's not moving. And they put a strobe light on him, a.k.a. Disco Yeti. Uh, <laughs> long live the disco. And because he was so strong, this animatronic, that it was like ripping the mountain apart. Yeah. So that's how strong this thing was. He's giant. Expedition Everest. It's a pretty good bronze pick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it is really sad that he's not moving because, like, when he was doing the, the full-on grab towards you as you're yeah. going down, like, that hill, that was awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. What a great way to end that ride. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Expedition Everest. That's a really good one. Yeah, I made the mistake of going on it twice. In a row? That's In a row. That's fun. Well, and that's because it does go backwards at a portion of it, so that's that's what gets me usually. Yeah, so the like reason that. I don't like that is because our, kind of, our brother Sven, Yes, that we met down there. We've shown him on the show. Yeah, so I went on it with our stepdad, and then Sven was like, I want to go on it too. So I was like, sure, not a big deal. I didn't feel sick. And so we go down it, and like the whole way home to wherever we were staying, I sat backwards on the bus, and he's like, oh, don't throw up, Katie. <laughs> Sven is also German, so that's why. <laughs> that was <laughs> even a good German accent. I'm so sorry, Sven. He he's was not watching. Making, he's not. But he was making fun of me, so I didn't like that. I feel like I wrote it with Sven, so too. Sick. And I felt like I was trying to keep down the like <laughs> the, you know, the cinnamon roll I got from not Jumbo House, but where was it? The Tuscan. Tuscan. Yeah. Tuscan House or Tus Tusker House. Tusker. Tusker House, not Tuscan Raiders. Star Wars, different thing. All no. Disney. Good pick. But anyway, how about you? What's your third? Uh, believe it or not, my third is also Expedition <laughs> Everest. <laughs> so you picked it, I'm like, no. Um, Why is yours? Expedition Everest is the culmination of what's so great about Animal Kingdom because Animal Kingdom's got, I would say, some of the best theming out of any Disney park. Yeah. And the queue line, like Katie's talking about, it's a really good job of setting up and really bringing you into the story, unlike almost any other Disney ride. And it fits so perfectly into Animal Kingdom. It doesn't feel like it's an attraction they just put on top of like the whole, like, oh, there's animals and it's kind of a zoo, yeah. but or not a zoo. And then they just like threw that on there. It's like, yeah. no, this is integrated perfectly. And yeah. it wasn't there at opening day. So like no. that alone, I think makes it feel like just a step above a lot of the other attractions there. Yeah, and I sure. love it so much. I, I, I don't like the going backwards part, yeah. but the ride itself is really cool. And I just, uh, I really like the Yeti. It has, it's you no, know, it's not exactly the same as my beloved, um, well, the other mountain over in Disneyland. I can't say it though, because uh, if I do, I'll start chanting. Um, Matterhorn! <laughs> <laughs> you said it, you said my trigger. 
For everybody watching, that's my trigger. If you ever want to see me go crazy in public, I'll start chanting for the Matterhorn, uh, which has the Abominable Snowman, two different things, and that ride will mess you up like you need a chiropractor. But this ride's really good, uh, and I it's pretty straightforward except for the part where it goes backwards. That's the only part that's like It weird. is kind of a cool thing, though, if you think about it. Yeah, it like, is cool. And they started doing yeah. that at other Disney rides, too. I didn't realize this. Like, overseas, they have some that go backwards, too. I'm okay. like, oh, look at that. Uh, I would love the lift hill, by the way. You get to oh, see a lot up there. That is terrifying. It's terrifying, but you get to see, like, that little temple and the Yetis up there. It's yeah. such a nice little, like, oh, here cool. we go. Yeah. yeah. I just like that ride a lot. So I'm, I'm totally with you. Yeah. All right. Now we have to move to your silver, your second place. Kilimanjaro Safari. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think it's going to be a twin. <laughs> it, might be a, it might be a full twin thing to Pretty sure. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, really enjoy this ride. Kind of like you're talking about um, it being, I don't know, just really interesting. Yeah. And like the, the queue line, well, there's not really much going on with it. You're sure. kind of outside parts of it. Um, and then what I liked about it is I actually went to South Africa and went on an actual safari. And so just to kind of compare it in real life after, because I had gone on Kilimanjaro several times. How to stack up. Kilimanjaro has a lot more going on. In sure, yeah, less small shots space, too. But mm -hmm. yeah. I think this seems pretty accurate because cool. I remember, like, when I was in South Africa, I'm like, I gotta get in the back. <laughs> like, if you're not in the back, you're not in the right place. And it was really cool because when I went there, there was like a pack of lions following us, which was terrifying but also cool. And there wasn't any like, you know, where they have like a dugout kind of area around the lions. That doesn't happen in South Africa. So if they wanted to like maul us could happen didn't happen still alive nice but anyways i really just enjoy seeing all the animals and then being like right there by the vehicle do you miss the big red little red storyline i mean it was kind of cool i think after seeing it like a couple of times you go oh, okay well sure i already know what's gonna happen and I, I forgot about this but originally when they actually had the ride first open they actually had Big Red laying somewhere. Oh, uh, and really? Apparently, a lot of people freaked out about that. So they only yeah. did the Little Red part at the end, where like a cast member saves Little Red. And Little Red still exists. It's like at a like behind the scenes area or something oh. somewhere. So Little Red's still around, and there's still some of the pictures and stuff in the queue line for that, which is pretty cool. Okay. And they still have the warden up on the little TV, and they've got they teach you words and stuff, and they teach you little facts about the animals. So I I, I hear you. There's there's some cool stuff going on there. Do they still have like the plaque with all of the animals? Yep. It's but up it's top. Like, oh, I liked it better down here though, because yeah. you can like point them out and be like, I see this one right here, but I I kind of understand a little bit. Yeah, what she's talking about is like actually on the ride vehicles, they have like all the animals on yep. these like plaque things. Either they used to be on the back of the benches, or now yeah. they're up above, so you can like point and look at them. And yeah, like, oh, pictures yeah. of each animal and yeah. like the name of it. Scimitar, and... horned oryx, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Why is it your favorite or second favorite? Why? Well, yeah, it's my second favorite Sorry. too. So uh, yeah, uh, it is because it is such. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before it's yeah. the realization of walt disney's dream of a jungle cruise because that's what he originally wanted for jungle cruise was to have real yeah. animals out there yeah. but it was going to be so hard to do but they figured it out and it's insane to me that's like you go in and you see rhinos and then you go see hippos and then you see crocodiles and then you're out in the savannah on the serengeti you've got like the the giraffes the zebras the wildebeest and then you have the lions and the cheetahs it's just like every big animal you want to see in africa is there and it's like i don't they do it they hide it so well all the barriers yeah. and the barricades and all this stuff and it's just very well done and usually you've got these pretty like decent drivers who you know kind of go through yeah. their spiels what they normally yeah. do sometimes they can be a little more funny but it's not like jungle cruise there's not a lot of jokes on yeah. this one well it's interesting too because if you think about all the different habitats in such a small space that they had to create like just the thought yeah. process like the imagineers or whoever made that yeah. it's insane so um i've heard that you can do like tours I've yes you can do personally. behind the scenes tours now um there's a few i think there's i know there's like the caring for giants one okay. i think it's like elephant focused and there's like ones now where you can actually like see people be on like rope bridges or go like you can see them up like little huts and things and that sounds cool yeah it is really cool yeah uh the other reason i really like too is now that you have like the nighttime version of it oh, which is yes. so freaking cool and it's kind of eerie because it's just like kind of at dusk but they put on these big kind of floodlights to make it look like sunset so the animals don't go to sleep <laughs> so you're going through but it can be kind of dark and it is kind of freaky especially when you're going over like where the crocodiles are you're like oh my gosh like <laughs> there's a lot of i can't see them all like yeah oh it i love it it's so that's, good yeah it kind of gives you that again the jungle cruise yeah. vibe like especially at nighttime that's way more fun to me going on it at night when they have the lights and stuff yep. so 
and it's cool. it is the Take premier care. ride at, King, at Animal Kingdom. If I had to have you go on one ride there, I would really say go on this one because it is the perfect example yeah. of what it is and an evolution of theme parks. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like a theme park anymore. Just like I'm out on safari. Like, yeah, oh you're gosh. like in it. So. You're you're in it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Oh man, I love it. All right, number one. Countdown. Now, <laughs> now known as dinosaur. He walked away because this is the same. The same. Uh. No. My, I like Avatar Flights of Passage. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's people out here watching this who actually love Avatar Flight of Passage. I'm Good happy for you. for you. I'm so happy for you. I haven't seen any of that area yet, so... It's I, fine. But anyways. It's fine. For so what I know and what I've been on and enjoyed, Countdown is it. Yeah, Countdown to Extinction. Man. Man, we grew up with that. That was a stuff. And I don't really... I know that they named it Dinosaur because that was like the focus once it happened to be a movie and yeah. all that but i don't know i liked it when it was just countdown to extinction yeah. and then that storyline that storyline i never get sick of yeah it's great just go on it just in like a loop if you can go on it multiple times in a row ask jimmy he's done it it's awesome yeah it is amazing i think i realized this a test track too for some reason i love a corny intro movie I've fallen in love with it, and I hate it when they take him away. And this one still has one of those classic, like, late 90s, early 2000s movies where you've got yes. Dr. Marsh, played by the one and only... <laughs> I put her completely on Felicia Bl Rashad. Blinking <laughs> Fel right Felicia now. Felicia Rashad. I'm um, gonna put it on my mother brain. I can almost narrate and just, like, or say the entire, like... You know, her entire dialogue, his entire dialogue of Dr. Seeker, and the whole, like, story yeah. about it. It doesn't completely make a ton of sense, like, insofar as, like, she's trying to send you back to, like, the Jurassic period, and it's not going to be a big thing. And, like, yeah. he's trying to send everyone back to the late Cretaceous period. But there's, like, a reason. There's a story here, what he wants to do, mm -hmm. and I respect it. Mm -hmm. I respect it. And I love it. There's Bill Nye. You're in the freaking, you're in the line to get in there, and Bill Nye's just shouting out, like, a bunch of info. It's and magical. It's... it's and then, oh man, and you just get taken in to this crazy world brought to you by McDonald's at the time. Now different, which by the way, fun little fact, you look at the little piping in there, the red, white, and yellow, those are the, um, the scientific uh, formulas for ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. So if you look down there and they have a bunch of numbers, or mostly letters, obviously, uh, just look for that little throwback yes. there. But uh, also they have like, it says CTX, 98 or something so it says like countdown to extinction on one of the walls and it's still down there yeah it's really cool it's like a lot of little easter eggs but the ride itself we're not talking about the ride itself the yeah. ride itself obviously is a clone of the one that you get over uh, temple of the forbidden eye indiana jones disneyland mm -hmm. big jeep you get in and this ride is straight terror and i can <laughs> i can attest to it because i went on it 28 year old man by myself was scared i know every beat i know everything that's gonna happen in this ride I was still terrified yeah it was incredible oh my gosh ah. oh my gosh what's that over there oh my gosh Get, get. oh my gosh oh my gosh honestly scared honestly scared i was like and it's so scary because like the theming there's so many like plants and the dinosaurs look so good Except yeah. the first Carnotaurus now, I've realized, does not have feet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, nobody's going to look at its feet. And I'm just like sitting there, I'm like, hmm, what's, uh, what's, a... what's but, happening? But uh, that whole sequence of it chasing the car. Uh, that is and terrifying. This, and that part was the scariest to me when I was by myself on there. I was like, it would be. I, Were you I, sitting in the back left? Front left. That's, I was like, I was like I come think, get me. Yeah. I was like, You're just kind of chilling right there. It was so in the front amazing. Row. Uh, but yeah, I, I love that ride. I, I really do. I know they've made a few adjustments to like the audio and they've changed yeah. a few things around, but yeah. uh, I've still, I've always just loved it. And it just, I've loved dinosaurs since I was a kid. So it was one of yeah. those things that just spoke to me and I just can't, can't not love it. I love that whole so area good. back there, especially at night. It really pops. It's like all kind of bright neon. It's the only thing in Dinoland USA that's like super serious. Everything else is kind yeah. of a joke. Like this is like, this is serious. Like we're not screwing Legit. around. I love it so much. Yeah. Do you have a favorite dinosaur on the ride? Ooh. I'm boring. I like the Carnotaurus. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. It is. It's really amazing. I yeah. think I would just say the same thing. Yeah. The Iguanodon now. Aladar up front. Remember when they used to have the Iguanodon in the river? They used to have that animatronic yes. one in the river? Yeah. yeah. for like the river ride, the riverboat ride. 
That was yeah, cool. not outside of dinosaur. Just to be clear, yeah, he's still in that like. Yeah, that used water to be a Styracosaurus out there. Yeah, a long time ago. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. That's it's hilarious because of course now that we're doing this, we have the exact same ones that we pick. So again, from the top or from the bottom of the top, we're going Expedition Everest, mm -hmm. Kilimanjaro Safaris, Countdown to Extinction, yeah. aka Dinosaur. We always go by the old school naming nomenclature. Yep. But we want to know what yours are. Please leave them in the comments below. Let us know if you agree. Let us know if you disagree. Everybody be nice, because guess what? Your favorite ride is your favorite ride. And that's okay. <laughs> if you love the Navi River Journey, more power to you. That's a very terrifying animatronic. Lifelike. Incredibly so. Uh, man, that ride. Oh, God. I can't believe people wait that long. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just so boring. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's so boring. Don't wait more than 15 minutes for Navi River Journey. I've heard that Pandora at night looks really cool. That's what I want to say. We're going to have to go back through. Now that we're done with the parks, we're going to have to figure out what the next thing is. Is it best lift hills? Is it best food? Is it Disneyland? Which you haven't been Ooh. to in a long time. <laughs> Katie, you have to look at videos. You're like, I like this one. I, yeah, I yeah. have to look at it. Look at it. All right, perfect. Who knows? If you have an idea or you want to know, let us know in the comments yes, below. And please. we can kind of figure out and go with that next. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to support the channel, consider going to buy a shirt over at Spreadshirt or going over to Patreon. But just hanging out with us, that's great. I appreciate that. And once again, thank you to Stephen Purifoy for this amazing uh, Kevin that he drew. Go check him out on Twitter at Stephen Purifoy. He's wonderful. All right, Katie, we're going to get out of here. You want to sign us off? Bye. Ha <laughs> ha